Bishop's Grove, the home of the Bishops of Portsmouth. It's a pleasure to welcome you all to this farewell service for Archdeacon Gavin and Christina, who join us here in the chapel, distanced as appropriate for this, their last service in the Diocese of Portsmouth. Our introit came from the cathedral. It was recorded there by our cathedral choir. Alas, we can't be there together this evening to share in this service, but I hope that wherever you are, joining us through Facebook Live, you'll take a full part in this occasion. And if you can, stay connected at the end of the service so that we can have a few informal min minutes together as we bid farewell to Christina and Gavin. Inevitably, their leaving is not as we would have wished and hoped for, and indeed their arrival in the Diocese of Oxford will not be so either. Gavin's consecration as bishop has had to be delayed, and we continue to pray for him, for Christina, for the area of Dorchester and the Diocese of Oxford as they face a weight and uncertainty. So how sad it is that we must say goodbye in this way, but how glad we are to come together to thank God for Gavin and to thank Gavin for his ministry and service among us over the last nearly 10 years. For the small number who are joining us on Zoom, can I ask you to be particularly alert to remain muted throughout the service so that the quality of the mainstream made publicly available on Facebook is as high as possible for the many, for most who are joining us that way. Thank you. So we hold a moment of silence and then join together in the opening responsibility. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. Your word calls forth the dusk of evening. Your wisdom creates both night and day. You determine the cycles of time. You arrange the succession of seasons and establish the stars in their heavenly courses. Lord of the sky of hosts is your name. Living and eternal God, rule over us always. Blessed be the Lord, whose word makes evening fall. God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year.
grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. God our Father, long-suffering, full of grace and truth, you create us from nothing and give us life. You give your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. You do not turn your face from us, nor cast us aside. We confess that we have sinned against you and our We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the sake of your Son and bring us to heavenly joy. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of all mercy, your Son proclaimed good news to the poor, release to the captives, and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit, and set all your people free to praise you in Christ our Lord. As we say together Psalm 33, I'll say the odd-numbered verses, Gavin, the even-numbered verses, join with one of us or both of us as you wish. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for it is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the lyre. On the ten-string harp, sing his praises. Sing for him a new song. Play skillfully with shouts of praise. For the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers up the waters of the sea as in a water skin, and lays up the deep in his treasury. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Stand in awe of him, all who dwell in the world. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He frustrates the designs of the peoples. But the counsel of the Lord shall endure forever. And the designs of his heart from generation to generation. Happy the nation whose God is the Lord and the people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the children of earth. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. No king is saved by the might of his host, no warrior delivered by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance, for all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait in hope for his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits longingly for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. In his holy name have we put our trust. 
Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us as we have set our hope on you. Glory to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from Mark chapter 14, verses 32 to 38. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death, remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is the word of the Lord. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. God's salvation has been openly shown to all people. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. A reading from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 to 25. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us, through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word we registered here. Do you remember how four years ago, lots of people were saying that 2016 was the worst year ever, just because a few famous people who most of us had never met had happened to die that year. Well, 2020 certainly blew it right out of the water, didn't it? It was a very challenging and difficult year with the frustrations and worries of lockdown, the economic difficulties suffered by so many who lost their jobs or had long months of furlough, 
and of course the grief and anguish of those who have lost loved ones to the coronavirus pandemic. And now that we are in 2021, there are signs of lighter days ahead, but we've not reached them yet. As you know, this evening marks the end of my ministry as Archdeacon of the Mion. And so naturally I find myself looking back, not only to the last year, but on the last nine and a half years that I've had the privilege to serve here in Portsmouth Diocese. And as I reflect on my time here, I realise that above all else, it has been the fellowship that has sustained me and that I find myself giving thanks to God for. In particular, the fellowship I've enjoyed as part of the bishop staff team, the fellowship as a canon at the cathedral, for me and my family, the fellowship we've shared at Holyrood in Summington, which has been our home church base. And I want to give public thanks to Richard England and before him Stephen Gurling for their welcome, ministry and grace in welcoming an archdeacon in their midst. And perhaps most of all, the fellowship with the clergy, especially the area deans, the readers, the lay chairs and the church wardens across the patch. Indeed, I must give a special word of thanks to my reader colleagues, not only in the meal, but across the diocese. It's been a privilege to serve you as warden of readers and truly to have been welcomed as part of this special fellowship of readers, even though I failed that most basic of qualifications by the misfortune of having been ordained. A fellowship too, in our very special diocesan office team at Peninsula House, or now dispersed and home working due to coronavirus and meeting by Zoom. And if I may, a special mention and thanks to my partners in crime in the monthly penthouse games and pizza evening you know who you are. And it's this theme of fellowship that I want to reflect on with you for a moment in this, my final sermon in the diocese. Because fellowship in whatever form is vital. After all, one of God's very first pronouncements about human beings was, it is not good for people to be alone. And yet one of my observations as Archdeacon has been just how isolated many Christians, and especially perhaps many clergy, often can be. It may be partly our fault, partly due to the structures and systems we put to work in, partly a result of the fundamental theological error that seems a separation between clergy and laity. But for whatever combination of reasons, it saddens and concerns me to meet so many clergy and other church members who feel visibly isolated and bereft of meaningful, mutually supported fellowship. In our Gospel reading, Jesus, at the most anguished point of his earthly ministry, there in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night of his arrest, he asked for two things. Famously, of course, he asked to God to give him the strength that was placed before him. And then secondly, I think we reflect on this a little less often. In fact, before praying that prayer to God, he took his three closest disciples, Peter, James, and John with him. And he made a request to them. He asked them to keep watch and to stand with him in that difficult hour. To keep watch and stand with him. And my reflection is simply this. If Jesus needed that, then how much more do we? Jesus needed to know the strength and the companionship, the support, the fellowship of those with him. And how much more do we? And so to our epistle reading, Hebrews 10, and the writers call here to these early Christians to consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. To not give up meeting together, but to encourage one another. And all the more so as we see the kingdom of God growing and the day of Christ's return approaching. The call here is clear. Fellowship is invaluable. So treasure it, use it, work at it, build it, 
And all the more in these challenging and frustrating and difficult, potentially isolating COVID restricted times. And in fact, it's been inspiring time and time and time again in these last 10 or 11 months to see the creative new ways that churches and individual Christians have discovered and invented and worked blooming hard at to build fellowship, enable fellowship, preserve fellowship, particularly at these times when we're not able to meet face to face. Services on Zoom, on FaceStream, using the internet, phone contacts, regular commitment, not an easy task, but inspiring and well, well worthwhile. And so as I end both this sermon and my time ministering here in Portsmouth Diocese, I want to thank you for the fellowship, for the love and the friendship that you shared with me in so many so rich and so varied ways. And I want to leave you with a gift. Actually, it's a gift that God has for you. A gift that tonight is dispersed due to the uh, constraints of lockdown, but a gift of each other. Those of you joining our worship via the live stream at home, and those of you who you represent, those you represent in the parishes across the diocese, you are a priceless, precious gift. Indeed, this uh, last day of the week of prayer for Christian unity, we remember the depth of that gift. That it's not just our Church of England, not just here in Portsmouth Diocese, but the whole body of Christ across the globe and through the ages. Precious, precious gift. Truly the household of God. So cherish one another, support one another, love one another, encourage one another as you have supported, loved and encouraged me. I want to thank each one of you as I thank God for each one of you, for the fellowship we share together and for the fellowship, worship or witness you are going to continue to share together as God leads you in the years ahead. And I end with three verses from another one of my favourite Bible passages from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Firstly, verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. And then the blessing that Paul gives at the end of that chapter, verses 23 and 24. The blessing I pray for each one of you. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Amen. Join now in an act of commitment, commitment to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? With the help of God, I my will. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? With the help of God, I will. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? With the help of God, I will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbour as yourself? With the help of God, I will. Will you acknowledge Christ's authority over human society? by prayer for the world and its leaders, by defending the weak, and by seeking peace and justice. With the help of God, I will. So let us pray. As we gather to celebrate Gavin's ministry here in the Diocese of Portsmouth 
and to say our farewells as he moves to Episcopal ministry in the Diocese of Oxford. We are mindful of the person we have come to love and respect and the family who have made their home among us. We are mindful of the sadness of saying goodbye as well as the joy of new challenges. Tonight we pray for Gavin and Christina and their family, praying for God's blessing as they move house and relocate. Tonight we make a good end and a joyful beginning as we send them to Dorchester with our love and prayers. May they find warmth, wit and welcome, friendship, fellowship and fulfilment in this new chapter of their life and ministry together. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Lord, for the Diocese of Oxford and for the Episcopal area of Dorchester in particular, for all who live, work or worship within it. We pray especially for Stephen, Bishop of Oxford, Alan, Bishop of Buckingham, Olivia, Bishop of Reading, and for Judy, Archdeacon of Dorchester. We pray also for all Oxford diocesan staff and ministers, lay and ordained, that they may know your presence with them as they seek to serve you and as Gavin joins them. Fill them with your Holy Spirit, guide them, and lead them in sharing your generous, abundant love with all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for Gavin's ministry among us, for his leadership as Archdeacon, as Warden of Readers, in diocesan committees, in parishes and in the wider community for his gentle wisdom and gracious service for his contagious enthusiasm and dreadful sense of humor as he has blessed us by his presence in this diocese over the past nine years may he know the blessing of your presence with him in the years ahead lord hear us Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those in our own Diocese of Portsmouth who have worked alongside Gavin and will miss him. We pray for Gavin and Christina's friends and family as they adjust to Gavin and Christina's new roles and new home. We pray for your blessing upon Will Hughes as acting Archdeacon of the Meon and for all the churches in that archdeaconry, as they adapt to the change and plan for the future. May they all know your peace, your guidance and your joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we join all our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer, in what has become something of a Portsmouth tradition, unmuted if you wish your own voice to join with the angels as we pray in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed Amen. be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us sins, our sins as we forgive, as we forgive those, those who sin us. us. Save us, save from, us from the time of trial, and, and deliver, deliver us from the kingdom, the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Praise the Lord.
go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. To love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. very much uh, that all those who shared with us in the service um, can hear me again. I'm a little further away now from the uh, from central control in, in Bishop's Grove and so can't quite see whether I'm unmuted or not but I imagine someone on a screen somewhere will be waving frantically if I can't be heard. We've come together in a way we wouldn't have chosen but nevertheless, we have come together um, with both sadness and joy uh, to say goodbye to Christina and Gavin, and indeed to their children um, who are joining us and are part of this occasion tonight. Um, so we're delighted that Emily, that Susie and Harry are with us virtually as well. Thank you all for joining us and for sharing first in the service and now in this brief farewell to, to them both. Many of us, indeed most of us, have long expected that this day would come. Um, for me in particular, I've known Gavin for longer than most people in this diocese. And I always thought that one day, he, he would become a bishop in our church. So we are glad and joyful, not just for them, of course, not just for the Diocese of Oxford, but for the whole church as we seek together to proclaim the gospel and to build the kingdom. This isn't about our little patch, our bit, wherever it is and however precious and important that is to, to us. So although we're saying goodbye today to Gavin and Christina, in a very real sense we aren't. We still belong together, we're united in Jesus Christ, in the church, and in our shared commitment, privilege and joy to be fellow disciples of Jesus Christ. Everyone joining this occasion tonight will have particular memories of Christina and of Gavin. Um, perhaps if we were together, we'd have enjoyed sharing them uh, as we drifted around the cathedral nave with a glass of wine in our hands and perhaps um, something to eat in the other. Alas, we can't do that, but perhaps you'll forgive me if I indulge myself just a little and mention two or three. First, of course, and uh, Emily, Susie and Harry will remember this, the first Saturday morning after Gavin had been interviewed 
for this post and invited by me to come as Archdeacon. The family paid a visit to Fairham. Um, I'm delighted to say that these days, Emily, Susie and Harry and I are the best of friends, I think, uh, but it didn't quite begin that way. We trust, we know that in the end, um, they've come to enjoy being here, they've enjoyed being in Fairham and at Holyrood together as a family and in Sherry so much. And then, of course, there have been the more regular and routine occasions of diocesan life. In this chapel here, I shall particularly remember Gavin standing at the altar and presiding at the Eucharist amongst us with us, as well as for us. And all those many, many occasions in which he shared and led our diocesan life. We think particularly of his oversight of ministry alongside the MDM team. We think of his work in the Diocesan Advisory Committee and the Finance Committee. And as we celebrated last night as Warden of Re Readers, those wonderful weekends in July on the south coast of the Isle of Wight. There are so many good things um, and it is with hearts full of gratitude and thanks that we say goodbye to you today. It's hard to put it succinctly and properly and well, but so many people all across the diocese and well beyond Gavin and Christina want through me now to say thank you for your commitment, for your service, and for your part in the ministry we share. Thank you so very much indeed. We have some gifts, and um, first of all, there are two identical boxes. There's a his and her box. Um, Colour coded. Um, uh, color coded, yes, the, no, the two that are the same, if we could, to begin with. Let's go for these. Part of a bishop's ministry, indeed any Christian ministry, is about hospitality, um, which Gavin and Christina are very good at. Um, but here's a little something to help them a little more with their hospitality. Um, do open if you'd like to, and I guess people on, on, I think on, on screen <laughs> would like to see that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and we wrap them too well. Yes. The bishop knows how competitive I am, so the chance to beat Christina can only be my own before her. Uh, I've, got I've, got I've, managed, I've, I've managed to say some farewell words without reminding you that you win the competition. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Um, Confetier, the office, home. It's um, double walled confetier for keeping for keeping the coffee pot. Um, 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 they might come in for guests too, you know, one for detail and one for full strength because of that. And many of you um, will know that over this last year, well, we all know we've done so much uh, via video conferencing. What you probably don't know is that for the whole of that year, um, Gavin has been operating with, how shall I put it? I think this is great. Some <laughs> borrowed kit, um, some headphones and a microphone that sort of came from somewhere else. <laughs> so we thought that at least in the short term, as he begins ministry um, as Bishop of Dorchester, he might like a proper thing of his own. That's very kind of Miss Christina can give the ones I've been using back to the NHS as she finishes <laughs> 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 in a couple of weeks' time. And as Gabby opens those, because I've, I've, I've given the game away really as to what they are. Uh, Christina, there's a oh, nice. personal gift to you in affection and with thanks for all your love and kindness to us and to so, so many people 
around there and in the dances. Thank you. We really enjoyed our time here. We're very grateful to all the support we've had. And finally, thank you very much. Just for now, a few flowers. Um, when you arrive in your new home, you may find some um, more from us, but the ones for here don't need to last, do they? Gavin and Christina, with our thanks and love and prayers, we bid you God's speak and from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Thank you. If I can just say a couple of words, I don't presume. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, as I said in my sermon, I, I do give thanks to God and for each one of you, um, but particularly the closest colleagues that I've had. And it was wonderful to have my two co and IT colleagues leading the prayers. And you can tell how close we are, how well we know each other as a team. That Peter started first by praying for the Diocese of Oxford. That they're going to need it as they receive me into their needs. And then Jenny prayed for my critical sense of humour. I don't know if she was giving thanks or praying for it to change. Um, as I, I treasure them, I think too of uh, Stephen Peter Sutton and Joanne Grenfell now, Bishop of Stepney, and the years we had working together. And uh, also Trevor Reader, who was very much my mentor, Archdeacon, as I started in post. And I think Trevor's probably part of our service this evening. Trevor used to challenge me whenever we were to service in the cathedral and saying that he was waiting for the day when I would have my hand up during one of the, uh, the hymns in worship. And had we been singing Thine Be the Glory tonight in the cathedral, I suspect he might have seen it at last. Um, as well as those close colleagues, um, particularly as well, Victoria James and Wendy Kennedy, two thousand secretaries I've worked with, and above all, Bishop Christopher. Um, your trust and friendship and faith in inviting me to the Archdeacon, the years we shared together, and uh, the model you've now set me for Episcopal ministry um, is going to, if anything, stand to me in good stead for what comes next. And um, it's certainly the pattern that you've shown me. So thank you, and Sally as well, for friendship and uh, hospitality. Thank you, and thank you all very much in there. Thank you all. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you, Christina. Thank you all who joined on Facebook um, and a smaller number on Zoom as you participated and as you've been colleagues. The others will catch up on YouTube later. Uh, we wish you a very good evening, a very good week. And wherever you are, perhaps uh, having prayed quite a lot for Gavin and Christine today, we might simply end with a virtual round of applause for them. Good night.